The all new GNOME 47 is finally here and the newest mega update to the world's most popular Linux desktop environment is absolutely packed with improvements, changes and some exciting things sprinkled all over. The GNOME 47 release, codenamed Denver, is all about polishing touches. But this is a huge release because of the sheer number of things that are getting updated here. The file manager has changed, there are cool new options in the settings and we also get accent colors now that completely revamp how your computer looks. Yeah, there's a lot here. So let's jump right in and crack this list. Alright, starting off with the coolest thing that GNOME 47 brings, accent colors are finally here. Finally. Ever since GNOME 40 series came out, it had pretty much killed customization on GNOME because of the new underlying library that is GTK4 and libadvaita. Blue has been the primary color of the most popular Linux desktop environment. I kid you not, everybody using GNOME has been forced into making blue their favorite color, but not anymore. GNOME 47 gives us 9 different accent colors to choose from. I'm really liking the implementation here. Changing the accent color changes these pills here in the status controls and borders and highlights and I'm thankful to see some other color except blue on my screen. I don't hate blue but it's like if you set your favorite song as your alarm, you'll start hating it. Talking about hating, I hate that the file manager icons don't change colors based on the accent color. My Linux Mint does it and it looks amazing. I'm sure down the road this feature will be added here but right now, blue it is. Overall, this is a very welcome change. Accent colors start to open up the customization doorway on GNOME 47 and all the pre-selected colors here look very nice with the desktop. All you need to do is get a matching wallpaper. GNOME 47 brings a big change to the file manager. The sidebar has been retuned to be more useful and efficient. Previously, all the default directories in your home like desktop, downloads, videos were visible in the side panel. Now, there's a smaller subset of these present here and these are customizable. You can right click here and remove the ones that you don't use. You can drag and drop them to adjust the order and you can also drag and drop any directory from any location here and create a new bookmark. Although I'm very used to the old way of bookmarks, I use them regularly, this new way is definitely the better bookmarks feature as this is going to let you create a more personalized bookmarks panel and you can also make it more efficient for your workflow. Yeah, you'll need to spend 5 minutes here. And in the top section here, we lose the computer option that took us to the root directory. Now, to go to the root directory, you need to click on this address bar, type in slash and hit enter. But I don't think most of us use the root directory on a regular basis or have any business there. So for the most of us, no harm done. GNOME 47 completely redesigns prompt dialogues. The little boxes that pop up when you need to confirm something like saving or discarding changes to a file, confirming system shutdown and other things are now better than ever. The developers have played around with the design, especially the border radius and the new dialog boxes look super clean. These dialog boxes are now responsive as well. The options in the dialogs will now automatically shift from horizontal to vertical based on the parent window size. This is fantastic as it's going to be more aesthetic on smaller screen laptops and even when you're using tiling windows. This feature is also created keeping in mind GNOME on mobile. So when and if Linux on smartphones ever becomes a thing, GNOME will be ready. Actually many of GNOME elements like its settings and file manager are completely responsive to screen size and GNOME has been doing a good amount of work in this regard. The accessibility settings give us a new activate windows on hover option that lets you activate a window by just moving your mouse on it. This is a cool feature if you work with two or three windows styled side by side like this and this is going to be helpful when you are typing. While it might seem like you are just saving a single click, the boosted responsiveness is going to be enjoyable. But apart from that, I don't find anything to write home about this feature. It would have been really awesome if instead of just activating the windows, this brought the applications to the foreground. That would have been a game changer for people like me who work with multiple applications and are continually switching back and forth. GNOME 47 brings hardware acceleration support for screen recording. Now, when you use the pre-installed screen recorder in GNOME, the OS will use hardware accelerated encoding on both Intel and AMD GPUs. This will result in a smoother performance and operation when you are capturing the screen. Screen recording in Linux, when it works, it works. But if it doesn't, it can be a messy business. 
I have never actually had a great experience with GNOME's pre-built screen recorder. But that's because I need very high fidelity and frame rate for these videos. GNOME screen recorder doesn't provide either. This screen recording feature previously relied on the CPU only, which could cause jitters and lags when you started recording the screen. However, with GNOME 47, you don't have to worry about lags when you start recording. Now, a good chunk of this processing is being offloaded to the GPU, resulting in more CPU cycles free for applications and the OS. I tested it out and yeah, screen recordings now do feel smoother and even the quality of the screen captures has improved. This is a great improvement. When you want to quickly capture the screen, you can start screen recording from the status menu or by pressing Ctrl plus Shift plus Alt plus R. If you have more than one disk on your computer like I do, they are now shown in the sidebar itself. This is another change that I really like. I have multiple hard disks on my computer and these additional hard disks is where I actually store all my work and personal files. I'm always changing Linux distributions so I don't store any important files on the operating system's home directory. And on GNOME, to access my other disks, I had to click on additional locations and then they were shown there. This kept the sidebar looking clean and pretty but it added an inconvenient extra step when I was working. On Linux Mint, my additional drives are sitting there in the sidebar itself, which I can directly access. Now I get the same feature on GNOME as well. GNOME Web Browser version 47 ships with this release and it too brings new features and enhancements. For those of you who didn't know, GNOME has its own web browser that looks like Safari and works like Internet Explorer. GNOME Web can now automatically fill forms for you. Jump into the privacy preferences and you can add your information here like your name, address, contact information, email, which will let you quickly fill forms with this info. This update also brings a new bookmark sidebar which lets you jump to your favorite sites quickly and you can also search from these bookmarks. One thing that I would like added here in the future is folders for bookmarks. There's also a new privacy report feature which gives you a report of how many trackers have been blocked by this browser. By the way, this updated browser doesn't support Firefox Sync, so you cannot bring your passwords, bookmarks and other stuff over from Firefox. And unfortunately, the release notes say that there's no estimate for when Firefox Sync might be enabled. This is actually because of some changes that Firefox has done in its account authentication process. On laptops with lower screen resolutions, the bottom dash icons had some accessibility problems. Sometimes they got too small and it was difficult to interact with them. This was specifically a huge problem on older laptops which tend to have low resolutions. With the GNOME 47 update, the system automatically detects such screens and intelligently scales icons to appear larger and be easier to interact with. As GNOME desktop is moving forward in time, technologically, functionally and visually, things like these are very important from a sustainability point of view. When adding additional keyboard layouts or languages from the input sources, you can now see how the layout of the keyboard looks by clicking on this icon here. This new feature will help you in selecting the correct input source for your language easily without trying all the other options here. Most languages do have multiple layouts, so this is a good thing. GNOME 47 brings a big improvement in its functionality. GNOME's inbuilt remote sessions are now persistent. If you get disconnected from a remote login session and then you try to connect back, the session will now continue instead of starting from scratch. The system will be in the same state as when you left it and you don't need to restart everything. This makes remote desktop sessions significantly more useful and usable. GNOME 47 comes with a brand new file open and file save dialog. Previously, when you wanted to save a file or even open a file, the dialog box that popped up was actually a standalone application. But now, these dialog boxes are powered by the existing files app and you also have access to the bookmarks that you created here in the sidebar. And since this is based on the files app, you can use files app features like zooming the view, changing the sort order or the icon view and more. And this dialog also generates thumbnails faster and you also get access to the search feature here. This new thing not only consolidates the code but also makes the system more tightly knit and integrated. Moving on, we get a new add user dialog box. While the functionality has not changed here, the widgets here have been modernized. And it's not just the add user dialog. Many other screens here in the settings have received upgrades to use the latest user interface components. This touches up that look and gives us a more cohesive and modern feel. 
GNOME 47 also brings a huge core upgrade. It's very niche but huge nonetheless. The VLAN DRM lease protocol has been integrated into GNOME 47. This is going to vastly improve the virtual reality headset experience with GNOME desktop environment. This announcement is going to allow GNOME Desktop to lease direct rendering manager resources like Steam VR assets to a VR headset. This is a very important technical implementation as VR headsets like Apple Vision Pro and Meta's Quest have made a lot of noise this year. And people using such headsets will have a smoother experience getting them to work with Linux. Although a niche feature right now, this has been a long awaited update to GNOME with initial discussions and work starting almost 3 years ago. So it's good to see this news as this is an important step forward in making VR headsets and VR applications play nice with Linux systems. The GNOME Calendar version 47 that we get here also receives many bug fixes and improvements. This is actually a very big update for the calendar here with around 50 bug fixes. Also, elements are redesigned to be easier to use. The event detail pop-up gets a noticeable amount of touch-ups. A lot of work has gone into making this pop-up more refined. This looks graceful to the eye. The add calendar pop-up also has a few updates. Gnome Circle is a group of cool apps which Gnome officially promotes. This is like an exclusive club of apps which play nice with the Gnome desktop. It's like an ecosystem. With Gnome 47, 6 new apps are welcomed into this club. Starting off, we have binary which converts numbers between different bases like hexadecimal and binary numbers. Then there's Bibliotheca which lets you browse and read GNOME documentation. It's completely offline. You don't need internet to work with Bibliotheca. Then there's Hieroglyphic which lets you search for latex symbols just by sketching. This is really cool. This is actually using machine learning to match what you draw to different latex symbols. Resources, which is a user-friendly system monitor app, also gets promoted. Tuba is a browser for Fediverse platforms like Mastodon. Finally, Voluta, which is a currency converter with a simple interface. GNOME has very high standards for who they let into the GNOME circle. And so these GNOME circle apps tend to be very high quality. And they also look and feel like they belong on the GNOME desktop. So it's good to see this catalog being expanded. GNOME's online account feature has been improved. IMAP and SMTP email account details are now automatically completed based on the address used. Microsoft 365 accounts now get support for email, calendar and contact integration. WebDAV accounts are now easier to set up as available services are automatically discovered. Fractional scaling has received many enhancements here. Previously, the older X11 apps could get blurry on some screens when using fractional scaling. That has been fixed now. There's a new experimental fractional scaling feature that you can enable to deal with blurry windows. Fedora 41 might also end up enabling fractional scaling by default. Here in the beta version, it is enabled and you just select the percentage of scaling. We are seeing many high DPI and high resolution monitors and fractional scaling becomes an important core feature of the OS to comfortably work on these monitors. The lock screen has been touched up here. The notifications that we get at the bottom of the screen when your GNOME is locked are now polished up to be slightly compact as well as look good on the eye. But that's not all. Yeah, we went through 19 things but that's not all. There are polishing touches and improvements throughout the system. The desktop looks polished and cleaner than ever. With every new update, GNOME has been getting more premium and just a great experience to use. This update is a major one that brings those incremental improvements and makes the new GNOME better than ever. You'll be able to try out GNOME 47 on Arch Linux right now and it'll also ship with Fedora 41 and Ubuntu 24.10, both of which are right around the corner. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, consider subscribing to the channel and leave me a big thumbs up. And if you're interested in leveling up your Linux skills, the link to my course Linux Mastery Express is given in the description below. It's designed to teach you Linux and take you from zero to hero within the shortest amount of time possible. You'll be using Linux like a pro within a matter of hours, so definitely check that out. Next up, check out top 10 insanely cool terminal apps that you should be using. I've got some amazing ones there, so if you want to level up your terminal skills and impress your friends, definitely don't miss that. Alright, this is Linux Techs, signing out.